This is our train. As you can see, it's called Glyndor. It was built by William Thomas and started building in 1922. William was from Cymru originally, but he was based in Birmingham. And he did, died in 1951, he uncompleted it. So it was eventually donated to the museum by his son from Australia. And then we managed to get enough funding to get it prepared and get it working. I suppose you'd all like to have a go at driving this train, wouldn't you? So I'll show you how it operates. It's a steam train, it's run on coal. You put the coal in there and light it. Water comes up in the gauge here when that is full. It's ready, light, get the steam up when it comes up here to 80 degree, 80, 90, up to that red mark, it's ready to go. And as simple as when you pull this lever off and off he goes. So every good Mickey Mouse movie, you see the whistle go in. <laughs> Trains are very important for transporting people, transporting material, coal, steel, food, quite a number of things. You should all move by rail. Cannon will halt. To remove the coal, to Swansea and the Port Talbot Steelworks and other industries, this line was built. A railway line was laid by the Rhondda and Swansea Bay Railways in 1863. Steam trains travelled and via the two mile Tunnel by 1890 connecting Blindgwynvi with the Rhondda Valley. Argoid Railway had its own halt, not a station, but like a bus stop, a halt. People could put a hand out and the train driver was obliged to stop and pick up. Hello. I'm up here. This is a great example of one of the few surviving old Victorian stone bridges left in the Avon Valley. It was built in the 1880s by Rhondda and Swansea Bay Railways and used to allow the millions of tons of coal from the upper Avon Valley to pass to the ports of Port Talbot and the steelworks. Who would have thought a hundred years later the railway lines would be getting used by tourists as a cycle track? 